Dear viewers, today we see zoogeography, principles, concepts of parallelism and endemism, factors influencing animal distribution. Introduction Zoo geography is the study of distribution of animals and plants on our planet which occur in different regions of the world in distinct pattern. The distribution of some animal species is so peculiar that it is difficult to explain their occurrence in a particular region. Zoo geography attempts to understand the complexities as well as the simplicity in the distribution of animals in the light of evolutionary and environmental influences. No animal species occurs uniformly over the whole world, but each is restricted to a definite range or area of distribution. The entire extent of land or water over which a species may occur is termed its geographical range and the kind of environment in which it lives is its ecological range. The geological range of a species is its occurrence in the past, thus the study of animal distribution and of the factors controlling it is known as zoo geography. Concept of parallelism, parallelism is the development of similar characters separately in two or more line ages of common ancestry and on the basis of or channeled by characteristics of that ancestry. Simpson 1961. The phenomena of parallel evolution or parallelism is thus one whereby two organisms acquire similar characteristics independently of one another, although they have steamed from related ancestral stock. Parallel evolution is extremely widespread since most of the genotype remains untouched during speciation. When Orangus that is Pongo and Gibbons that is Hibernates acquire certain structural similarities in connection with a branching arboreal mode of life, this was largely inherited from the common ancestor. Thus, phenomenon of parallelism always reveals a hidden genetic potential derived from a common ancestor. The phenomena of parallel evolutionary changes in related groups is particularly often encountered by paleontologists. The emergence of mammals from various lines of therapsid reptiles, the repeated emergence of telcosta from Holstein fishes, the independent evolution of similar functional types of separate lines of rodents. To illustrate the phenomenon of parallelism, we take up the case of the structural resemblances of new world and old world porcupines, the familiar spine bearing rodents. The new world porcupines are native to South America, their counterparts in North America are relatively recent immigrants from the South American forest. The old world porcupines are common in Africa and have spread into southern part of Eurasia. Some evolutionists believe that the southern American porcupines are direct descendants of the African forms. It has been suggested that the African porcupines cross the South Atlantic on raft like floating objects. A transoceanic dispersal route, however, seems improbable to several authorities. Concept of endemism Endemism is the ecological state of a species being unique to a defined geographical location, such as an island, nation, country, or other defined zone or habitat type. Organisms that are indigenous to a place are not endemic to it if they are also found elsewhere. The extreme opposite of endemism is cosmopolitan distribution. Endemism describes the distribution of a taxon that occurs in one place 
and one place only that is taxon X is endemic to location Y. Some examples of endemism are the orange bristed sunbird is exclusively found in the Finbos vegetation zone of southwestern South Africa and the glacier bear is found only in limited places in southeast Alaska. Endemic types or species are especially likely to develop on biologically isolated areas such as islands because of their geographical isolation. This includes remote island group such as Hawaii, the Galapagos Islands and Socotra biologically isolated but not island area such as the highlands of Ethiopian or large bodies of water like lake Baikal. It was one of the first patterns described in zoo geography and stems from the fact that islands typically have high level of endemism. Australia for instance as an island continent has 91 percent of its mammalian fauna as endemic compared to about 19 percent for the Nearctic and Palearctic together. High endemism on islands is thought to result from the high degree of isolation of island habitats from mainland habitat and hence a high potential for in situ evolutionary divergence within island faunas. Types of endemism There are two subcategories of endemism that is paleoendemism and neoendemism. Paleoendemism refers to a species that was formerly widespread but is now restricted to a smaller area. Neoendemism refers to a species that has recently arisen such as a species that has diverged and become reproductively isolated or one that has formed following hybridization and is now classified as a separate species. This is common process in plants especially those that exhibit polyploidy. Endemics can also be classified by their place of origin. Autoendemics evolved in an area within their current distribution. Alloendemics originated somewhere else dispersed to their current locality and then subsequently have gone extinct elsewhere. A good example of alloendemics are generally termed as relics that is they are remnants of at one time much more widely distributed taxon. Taxonomic relics are remnants of at one time much more diverse taxon for an example more species. A good example is Silicantha, Latimeria, Chalumania, the living fossil that was discovered in the 1930s. This is taxonomic relics of an lineage of early bony fish that were thought to have died out over 65 million years ago where 13 genera have been described from fossils. Geographic relics are taxa that at one time had much wider geographic distributions. Endemics can easily become endangered or extinct if their restricted habitat changes particularly but not only due to human actions including the introduction of new organisms. There were millions of both Bermuda petrels and Bermuda cedars actually junipers in Bermuda when they were settled at the start of the 17th century. By the end of the century the petrels were thought extinct. Cedars already revenged by centuries of shipbuilding were driven nearly to extinction in the 20th century by the introduction of a parasite. Bermuda petrels 
and cedars although not actually extinct are very rare today as are other species endemic to Bermuda. Factors influencing animal distribution? There are four main factors due to which animals and plants are prevented from spreading to every possible area. Number 1 climate, number 2 physical barriers, number 3 vegetation and number 4 other animals. Number 1 climate, animals are adapted to a combination of temperature and humidity that is affected by rainfall. Temperatures affect the concentration of animals. Only especially adapted organisms can live in extreme temperatures. Lower temperature prevents majority of reptiles from migrating northwards into the temperate areas. Polar bears, penguins and a large number of mountain inhabiting species are adapted to cold climate and cannot come down to tropics and subtropics. Amphibians need high humidity not only for their survival but also for reproduction and hence cannot venture into areas of low rainfall. Majority of animals cannot cross or survive in deserts due to extremely low moisture and high temperature. Water is needed for vital functions, so only animals that can conserve water are found in deserts. Hence, deserts are effective physical barriers. Fishes although adapted to live in aquatic environment are clearly restricted to either marine or freshwater habitats apparently due to osmotic problems. Very few migratory fishes can make use of both environments such as species of salmons and eels that migrate thousands of kilometers for reproduction. Low temperature of mountains prevents certain animals such as parrots from spreading to these areas. Breeding sites are needed for growth and protection of young. Some need specific areas to breed. High animal diversity is found in areas with varied topographical nature. Number 2. Physical Barriers Barriers such as mountains, deserts, rivers and oceans physically stop animals from invading new areas even when environment is conducive to their survival. For land animals, water is a barrier and for aquatic animals, land. Freshwater fishes and amphibians cannot cross seas, but amphibious reptiles such as tortoises, lizards and snakes owing to their thick and impervious skin have crossed seas to reach distant islands far away from the mainland. Climate and scarcity of vegetation makes deserts and mountains effective barriers rather than inability of animals to walk over them. Generally, rivers and lakes do not form effective barriers for most of the vertebrate species if they are good swimmers and usually they are and rivers form a network of highways for migrating freshwater fishes. Distribution of land animals is therefore restricted by one of the environmental limiting factors. Number 3. Vegetation Like animals, plants are also sensitive to temperature and rainfall and they affect dispersal of animals because the latter depends on vegetation for food. Tropical areas support broad-leaved dense forests, whereas in temperate areas only cold tolerant conifers can survive. Each type harbors its distinctive fauna. Desert climate can support few plants and thereby few animals. Some animals can feed on many types of vegetation and hence can spread to larger areas 
but others are choosy and would not accept anything except for their specialized diet. For instance, giant panda feeds on bamboo shoots in China and koala can live only on eucalyptus leaves in Australia. Such animals cannot survive outside their habitats. Number 4. Other animals. Different animals at different tropic levels make food chains which are interwoven in a complex food web. Such interactions among animals often restrict a particular species to migrate alone to other areas. Interaction between predator and prey, parasite and host and among commensal and competitors pose complex problems in an ecosystem and any immigrating exotic species can upset the balance in the native population. Dingo dogs, placental cats and foxes are in a danger of exterminating native carnivores in Australia. When two species have similar ecological requirements, they become competitors and one of the species is generally exterminated and restricted to a very small area. British red squirrel has reduced its range after the introduction of American grey squirrel. Similarly, extinction of Tasmanian wolf is attributed to the arrival of dingo dogs in Australia. Parasites generally have specific host and hence must migrate together to new areas. Predators and prey also show similar interactions. Some animals are territorial and need large areas for feeding, mating and protecting their young. Some are territorial during breeding season and occupy areas to prevent others from approaching them. There is high animal distribution where there is a room to occupy territory and defend against other members of the species. Summary This lesson described concept of parallelism. It is further followed by note on concept of endemism and types of endemism. Further, the lesson explored factors influencing animal distribution such as climate, physical barriers, vegetation and other animals. Thus, in this manner some choose geographical principles, concept of parallelism and endemism as well as factors influencing animal distribution have been discussed. Thank you. Thank you.